Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Typically we're going to be looking at your temperatures, temperature anomalies, and then at the very end we're going to be looking at your precipitation. Now, before we do get into the video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss a video when I do upload. Now, here's the National Weather Service currently, and you see some air stagnation alerts in uh, effect for parts of the northwest, including Idaho, northern Oregon, and then eastern half of Washington state. Then we have some air quality alerts. Uh, the same color, I actually went in to check if they if this was an air quality alert or an air stagnation advisory. It's an air stagnation advisory over the north the northwest and then an air quality alert down here. Uh, they're the exact same shade of gray, so that doesn't really help. Uh, and we have some red flag warnings over parts of south southern California and then some winded uh, advisories um, and some high wind warnings for that one county in Wyoming. Uh, now, as we move on to the east, where it's a bit more active, some first frosts in effect uh, th that's going to be taking place over parts of Alabama, South Carolina, uh, even into northern Georgia, parts of North Carolina, Virginia, and then some first freezes over in this dark blue. That's where the temperature could be uh, well below 32, around 30 degrees in these areas overnight, and that's going to probably kill a couple of plants or uh, most of these plants if you do uh, leave them outside. So make sure to take your plants in if you can. And then also some freeze watches over northern Georgia. And then also the coast of uh, Connecticut and into the southern Hudson Valley. Now, as we uh, look over to Maine and New Hampshire, you have some air, uh, not some air quality alerts, wind advisories and high, uh, high wind watches over parts of Maine. And then we have some winter weather advisories, actually. And that's going to be just some lake effect snow over the lakes uh, as you get that. Uh, westerly wind, it's going to be pushing some of the moisture onto the, the lakes, uh, especially Lake Erie, and uh, it's cold enough this time of year that you could actually be seeing some snow from that, uh, just like we would normally see in the winter. Now, we're going to look at your temperatures from the European model, and we're going to go low t uh, for your low temperatures and your high temperatures for that day. So this would be for Saturday morning, and you see uh, most of these areas in these reds, that's about 20 degrees or so, so up into the lower 30s to about 20 degrees, so you see a good area, a good chunk of the U.S. in these 30 degrees, uh, or, uh, or the, uh, about 20 degree mark, and that's over parts of the interior northeast, and then also parts of the northern midwest, and then into the Rockies in those higher elevations, and then the rest of the country mainly in the 30s, except once you get uh, very far south, so right around California, Arizona, uh, coastal Texas, Louisiana, uh, Florida, and then also coastal North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, you'll be in the 40s, 50s, or 60s, and 70s in parts of southern Florida. Now, as we move on to your high temperatures for Saturday, they're not going to get out of the 40s or 50s over much of the northern half of the U.S., but then once you get into the west, the southwest, you'll be right in the 70s and 80s, as well as parts of the southeast, the coastal southeast. Now, your low temperatures for Sunday, November 3rd, and you're going to see that cold air starting to spread a bit further south and east, and you see... 20s uh, pretty much for the Rockies and then spreading into parts of the Great Lakes and the interior northeast and then just outside of that in those lighter blues almost a white color that's going to be your 30 degree or right around 30 degrees right around like 30 to 35 degrees and then those darker blues 40 degrees to 50 degrees so most of these areas uh for your low temperatures, going to be right around 30, 40 degrees. High temperatures in the northeast, not getting out of the 50s or 40s. Uh, some areas not getting out of the 30s once you get interior and also into the Great Lakes and the northern plains where you're not getting out of the 30s, as well as some of those higher elevations in the Rockies. Now, as we go to your low temperatures for Monday, the 4th of November, you're going to be seeing some 20s over nor the northeast, not just the interior northeast, but that also includes uh, some of the coastal uh, northeast, uh, which includes western uh, Massachusetts, most of Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, spreading down into about western New Jersey. The coastal areas of uh, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, uh, most of New England, you're probably not going to get into the 30s uh, just yet, but you, you're going to see you're going to have another dip of cold air that could definitely bring you into the 30s, even the 20s uh, for these areas. And then 
30s or 20s widespread over the north, and then once you get further south, about 40 to 50 degrees for your low, uh, kind of warms up the colder, retreats back further north, and you're going to see uh, this would be for still Monday, and widespread 70s and 80s across the south, and then still in the 50s and 40s and 30s, some areas not getting out of the 20s uh, over parts of the north. Now, Tuesday morning, uh, as you're uh, getting ready for school and work, it's going to be in the 20s, teens, uh, single digits in some areas over parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, Iowa, North Dakota, and South Dakota, and then also the higher elevations in the Rockies, and then uh, widespread are going to be in the 30s as you get out um, to go to the bus or to go to work uh, on Tuesday, November 5th. Now, uh, this is really when it starts to change. Uh, you can kind of see that line here, and that's going to be getting pushed further south and east, and that's going to be leading to some cooler air over parts of uh, the the east and also parts of the south as well. Now, here's your low temperatures for Wednesday. And you, they're going to be in the 30s and 20s, uh, widespread teens over parts of Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Min Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then also into Colorado, Wyoming, and Idaho. And then as we move on to your high temperatures on uh, Wednesday, the 6th, they're going to not get out of the 20s over the northern plains. The south. The south not getting uh are gonna be in the about 80s, 70s, and then once you get further south, maybe some areas approaching 90, but not quite at 90, probably 85, and then the northeast in the 40s, or the northwest also in the 40s, but that warm air starting to creep further north, uh in the northwest, and that cooler air sunk, uh, sinking south in the northeast. Now your low temperatures for Thursday, you see much colder. Uh, that you see how that cold air is starting to push further south uh, as time goes on. And uh, really, I think the coldest day for much of these areas is going to be anywhere from November 8th, November 10th over these areas. And a bit sooner, right around uh, about November 7th, should be the peak for about these areas. And you see 20s, teens, uh, 30s as you get a bit further south, and then about 40, 60 degree, 40 to 60 degrees along this area and also this area. Now, as we continue to move uh, along here, your uh, high temperatures for Thursday, not getting out of the 30s for most of these areas in the Midwest, Great Lakes, and then the Rockies, uh, but a bit warmer as you get into the coastal northeast, and then southeast, the southern plains, and then back around into the southwest, where you're gonna probably going to be in the about 55, uh, once you get into the northeast, to about 60, 70, 80 degrees, um, maybe some isolated areas in the 90s over the southwest. And then uh, for November 8th, you see, uh, like I was saying, the, that cold air is going to move east, and you're going to see 20s over uh this is when the 20s will really really reach the coast of the of the northeast and you're going to see 20 degree readings uh and it feels like temperatures i was actually looking at them a little bit before and they're going to be in the teens or single digits uh single digits once you get a bit interior and teens once you get a little bit uh, closer to the coast and widespread teens over the midwest uh 30s once you get further south and west and then uh, some areas um, not not gonna um, still gonna be in the 60s or uh, 50s upper 50s. Now here's your high temperatures for Friday, November 8th. You see not getting out of the 30s over the Midwest, Northeast, and uh, some areas in the Southeast, especially right along those Appalachian Mountains. And then the West, you see really you really see this ridge in the West and this trough in the East, which means colder air being uh, sunk in, uh, sink down from Canada and that warm air being pushed up. And that's leading to some warm, warm temperatures for this time of year over the Southwest and even stretching into the Northwest and some very cold temperatures over parts of the East and um, the Midwest as well. Now, as you see your low temperatures for the 9th of November, I really think it's gonna be the coldest day for the Northeast and Great Lakes. And that's gonna be your your um, reading's going to be right around that 20 degree mark, so right around the low 20s, high uh, teens over these areas. So very cold conditions, and then 30s stretching all the way down into about Florida, uh, 
Pro Florida probably is going to be in, in the low, uh, right around like 33, 34 degrees. But you see, it's very expansive cold air. You usually, uh, especially the, this time of year, you're not seeing this, uh, 30 degrees over the panhandle of Florida and get reaching all the way to the Gulf Coast. So very extreme conditions over uh, for November. This is one of the most extreme Novembers I've seen as far as the cold air and how far south it's actually reaching. Now, your high temperatures, again, not getting out of the 30s and 40s over much of the east. Over the west, you could, you're probably going to be in the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, especially once you get to the extreme southwest, most likely the 90s. Now, your low temperatures for uh, the 10th of November, and this is going to uh, finish our 10-day uh, forecast as far as temperatures, and then we're going to move on to temperature anomalies. But you see, uh, as another uh, cold dip of air starts to originate out of Canada, out of that uh, west-central part of Canada, and then it starts to move east and uh, south, into parts of the the northern plains, and this this will probably move kind of like that, all that colder centered over the east, and uh, will most likely continue with this ridging pattern out uh, west, where you're going to be seeing some colder out west and some cooler air down uh, into the east. Now, here's your high temperatures uh, for Sunday, November 10th. And this is going to, they're going to be right around 20 degrees over the northern plains uh, and a bit warmer for the east. Uh, going to be in the 40s, 50s, some areas seeing the 60s over the south central U.S. in the 60s and 70s. And then over the southwest, going to be in about the 70s and 80s. And then the northwest going to be in the 70s. Uh, some areas mixing in with the 50s. So right around 70 uh, degrees, 60 degrees, uh, right around there. Now here's your temperature anomalies from the European model, and we're going to be going in six hour increments. So you see, this is what your temperature anomalies look like right now, and you see, we have well below average over a good portion of the U.S., excluding parts of California, western Washington, and Oregon, but most of this area, most of the U.S. is actually uh, in those below average, and that's actually, you can kind of see it, it's this front that moved through, uh, you might have heard about it. Some a, a lot of severe weather, especially very late in the season, to be seeing severe weather over the east. Uh, the east, and especially you don't really see it over the east. In, uh, especially not as far north as we saw. We saw it getting all the way down into northern New England, and it was. Uh, it, usually you see it over like this part of the country. Uh, sometimes into the southeast, but you don't usually see a big band. It was one continuous band of storms that moved, that just stormed through, uh, and ca caused multiple tornado, tornadoes, uh, a wide area of tornado watches, uh, tornado watches spread from South Carolina up through Pennsylvania, and then you had severe thunderstorm watches on either side, and at one point, the entire state of New Jersey was under a severe thunderstorm warning, uh, which you don't really see, I think we've seen it once before this year, I believe, uh, sometime in the middle of the summer, I don't exactly remember when, but definitely something uh, quite uh, rare happened last night with, with regards to the severe weather. As we continue to move on, see that cold air kind of persisting into Saturday morning, and then it starts to move a bit east as you're moving into Sunday. Sunday morning, the cold is centered a bit further east. Uh, you see some areas in the south, uh, south central uh, in southeastern U.S. in the 20s, and then uh, once you get to the west, you're in the about 10 degrees above average. So those blues, greens, and purples are indicating uh, those below average temperatures, and those reds and uh, browns and whites are indicating that uh, above average, if you're wondering. Now, as we continue to move on to Monday, uh, this is this would be Monday the 4th, uh, and you're going to be seeing that cold air start to move further and for further east. So now the cold air is really centered around the southeast, and then it kind of breaks up as you get into uh, November 5th, Tuesday. Uh, but still fairly cold. You're still below average, about 5 to uh, five to 10 degrees above average. But then that second shot of cold air starts to move in out of Canada. And if we continue with this over the winter, uh, it's going to be quite a historic winter, like I was calling for. This uh, really sets up a good pattern for what I was calling for uh, with regards to our winter. If you watch the recent winter forecast, you would know that I had 
the cold air on like last winter I have it uh, kind of centered over this area where it's going to be well below average and then moderately below average stretching kind of like this and that's what we've been seeing and then I've had this warm air over parts of the west so uh, if this continues to play out throughout the winter then uh, definitely this could uh, add up and I really think this is going to continue into the winter. A couple of times we could see a bit of a pattern switch where it kind of flicks around for a couple of days and then comes back. But current, uh, I made that forecast about two weeks ago. Uh, the model runs didn't go out this far to forecast this. And uh, it's currently adding up, uh, like I was saying. So I'm quite proud and uh, quite, uh, quite uh, content with my forecast that I made. And anyway... Uh, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning, you're getting into the, uh, you're about 10 to 15 degrees below average over the north, and then, uh, really centered over the north, you see warmer air as a front continues along with this system, uh, with this, uh, cold air, you're going to be seeing a system originate, and that's going to be leading to some cooler temperatures, uh, behind the front, and then some warmer temperatures out ahead of this front, and then also, once you get far enough behind it, you're also in the, uh, above average, uh, temperatures. Now, as we continue to move on Wednesday morning, still below average, and then you see this third wave uh, of uh, moisture that's going to bring along some drag along some cooler air, and that's going to be 20 to 30 degrees below average, and that's going to continue to ride on to the east as it uh, as we see uh, as we saw with the other systems. See. 25 degrees below average widespread, 20 to 25 degrees widespread, anywhere from Minnesota down through uh, into south central Texas, and then that starts to move further and further east. You see the cold, the core of the cold centered over the southeast, and you see 20 degrees widespread anywhere from northern Mexico all the way into southern Canada. Uh, that's about a thousand miles stretch, if not a little bit more, and then you see over the west you're about 10 to 20 degrees above average. So big change in temperatures. And then that starts to move on forward. This would be for Saturday morning, uh, the 9th, and then for uh, uh, Saturday uh, night, and then into Sunday morning. And that's going to end the 10-day forecast. But you see, on this last frame, you see this fourth wave of cold air start to originate. So that was four waves in about 10 days. So this is a... This looks to set up a very active pattern, a very warm across the west, very cold across the east. With every system that comes, uh, before we were seeing this uh, a, a similar pattern, but the the it was a really a zonal uh, move. It was kind of a very flat uh, uh, pattern where you had uh, pretty much just. It was just cold behind the system, warm in front of the system, no really ridging or troughing. But now we're back into that classic uh, troughing in the east, ridging in the west. Now here's your precipitation forecast to kind of wrap off this video from the European model, of course. And this would be for Saturday morning. See, pretty quiet, just some showers, snow, and rain over the Great Lakes. And then as we continue to move on, you see a little bit of a band of uh, snow and rain starts to set up and that moves throughout the Dakotas. I want to point out this red line is the 32 degree line. So you see some of this snow is actually not in the uh, in the 32 degree area, but so this is probably not going to stick. But uh, just keep that into account. If you do see snow over your area, make sure that you're actually in the 32 degree line because otherwise it's going to be a very wet snow or it's most likely not going to stick. If you're in that 32 degree line, you're pretty much safe. Uh, it's most likely going to stick at least for a couple of hours, maybe a day. Uh, still pretty uh, early in the season. Now, as we get into Monday morning, still just some showers, but you start to see the system start to develop. And this is the first cold shot, uh, pretty much, of, of air. And this is going to be leading to those colder temperatures of uh, those colder temperatures. And this is pretty much the first a uh, wave of cold air, and that's going to be along with a pretty powerful system. Uh, not crazy powerful, uh, not uh, just really going to be some snow showers. Or, um, not really, doesn't even have a rain snow line with this one. But you see some moderate to heavy snowfall indicated by those darker blues. And then you see some severe weather most likely popping up by Thursday. Uh, but other than that, than that severe weather, we're pretty quiet over the U.S. And then it starts to develop a rain snow line. Some rain on the north side of that. We'll have to see if that really plays out. Uh, and but I want I want to point this out. Uh, you see, these areas aren't actually 
really in the rain snow line. The rain snow line is right about here and then also here. So some of these areas aren't really even in the rain snow line. So uh, if you are in the snow, uh, if you are in, the, uh, in those blues indicating snow, uh, you might not actually have that falling from the from the air uh, from the clouds, or it might uh, just be falling and then turns into rain uh, as it starts to hit reach the ground as the air temperature is a bit warmer. Quiet over the U.S. for Saturday, uh, the 9th, and then uh, as we move on, another, uh, this is the fourth dip of cold air that's get, that was starting to reach out. And you see very intense snowfall over these areas, and then some very heavy rainfall. Uh, and if you didn't notice, the Pacific Northwest this entire time was being pummeled with heavy rain bands uh, from every single system. Uh, that originated from the Pacific, it was bringing in that heavy rain over parts of the Pacific Northwest into Cascadia, and that's going to be leading uh, to those systems and some very, uh, a very uh, hefty amount of rainfall, as you're, as you're going to see uh, in just a couple of moments uh, as we show the rainfall and snowfall. But before we do, do that, just look at this system, uh, very, uh, mo well, moderate to heavy snowfall, uh, but you see a really uh, wide area of rain and snow and ice, uh, so that could definitely be hazardous on those roadways. And then it moves into the northern Great Lakes and into Canada. Now, here's your total precipitation in the form of rain or snow, uh, especially once you get further north, it'll be uh, snow. But you see the northwest in those uh, indicated by those uh, reds and, and purples and uh, whites, that's about uh, six or uh, five to about 10 inches of rain. Um, in those greens, you're going to be about tenth of an inch to uh, half an inch, half an inch to one inch in those blues, one to two in those yellows, and then two to five in those reds. And then once you get to those browns and whites, it's about five plus inches. And if you are in a purple, that's about ten plus inches. So you see a good swath of at least a tenth of an inch, but really not a lot of rainfall except for that severe weather uh, that was that might set up over these areas over Texas, Oklahoma, parts of Kansas, uh, Missouri, and Arkansas, and then also uh, in the form of snowfall, a little bit of snowfall over the northern U.S. Now, here's your snowfall, uh, and see, anywhere in those grays, that's about a tenth of an inch to two inches, two to six in those blues, six to twelve in those purples, twelve to about two feet, uh, about a foot to two feet in those pur pinks, I mean, and then once you get to those blues, that's about two to four feet and then once you're in those about pinks, that's about 4 to 72 plus inches. So you see some of the Cascadia Mountains saying 72 plus inches. So that's very high elevations. Uh, and they almost all of the precipitation, especially this time of year, is in the form of snowfall. And then you see a good area of about th uh, 2 plus inches. Some areas of the northern Great Lakes, especially with that system that moved through, going to be seeing about 6 to 12 inches. So that's definitely associated with that system that was moving through uh, that area and on the north side brought some snowfall with it. And then we see a dusting over a good area of the northeast. And a couple of days ago, the VFS model was actually showing uh, over the coastal northeast and then down in, even into the mid-Atlantic, showing a good area of about two inches of snowfall. That has disappeared, but we'll have to see if that does come back. If that does, it would be uh, quite an early snowfall for those areas. Anyways, if you did enjoy that video, please consider liking the video, uh, consider subscribing, and turning on notifications. It took a lot of effort to make this video, uh, so I would appreciate if you did do that. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.